And you're live. All right. Good morning and welcome everybody to your Healthy Self Podcast. I am Kate Archibald, the host of the day and join me, with me the uh, founder of this great podcast and uh, amazing content creator, functional medicine provider, Reagan Archibald. Reagan, how are you doing today? Really good. Yeah, it's uh, September, which is crazy. <laughs> it is wild. We are eight months through 2021. That is, uh, that is crazy. Um, it's night at St. George this morning. Yesterday, overcast, it was like not over 100 degrees. And uh, this morning, it is nice. So finally starting to see a little bit of glimpse of fall here in St. George, which is always, nice. that's, that's always a sweet sign to get out of the blistering heat. Um, well, before we, we dive into uh, today's show, want to uh, cover, we had an awesome uh, health accelerator course last night. Um, I thought that was really cool. Talked about oxytocin and um, let's see, it was oxytocin. That, that's, oh, GABA. So it was oxytocin and GABA. My, my fascination with oxytocin just like skyrocketed after that conversation. That was, that was uh, really, really <laughs> cool and insightful. Um, so hopefully everyone, that if you were not involved on our um, hack or our health accelerator course, make sure you register for that. Go to accueastwest.com forward slash hack and you can register for that. Um, challenge this week is increase your oxytocin, oxytocin and you can do that by like following love, falling in love again, um, <laughs> really creating some appreciation and, and more affinity for your partner, loved one, be a dog it could be yourself um i i really like that concept reagan so um oh nice and ends uh putting some stuff in the chat box so uh she hugged her boyfriend <laughs> right after the call and told him um that was her homework assignment love that <laughs> nice it's, it's a good excuse to give people some hugs so it's a good way to raise your oxytocin um also our sponsor for this show as as the usual is the smart medicine Go to thesmartmedicine.com. Um, you can get some really good brain food, Inner Genius. Um, you can also uh, boost your immune system and your stem cell proliferation with Stem Boost. So go uh, go check those out, out at thesmartmedicine.com. Um, some really good stuff there. So today's show, let's let's dive in, Reagan. Um, I, I guess did I miss anything about the hack last night? I. I just thought that was a really good one. No, I, I think you nailed it. I mean, as long as everybody recognizes, uh, you know, just some of those action items. But the real important thing I, I think that people fail to, to look at when it comes to oxytocin and GABA is the fact that oxytocin helps with thyroid hormones. So you'll get a better uh, conversion of T4 into T3. So uh, that's an important piece. Uh, oxytocin makes testosterone four times more potent. That's a big component. And then the other big thing is that even estrogen gets more powerful. So uh, oxytocin and this, this connection that you have with other, other beings, other creatures, um, just having this this core level of gratitude is is one of the most important things to do for your health. And then heart disease, which is still the leading killer in our country, um, you know, it still kills nearly seven hundred thousand people every single year. Um, it's it's ridiculous. But the biggest thing that happens when you have massive amounts of oxytocin is your heart vessels literally open up. And what we learned yesterday is oxytocin helps stem cells, new stem cells grow into that cardiac tissue that's been damaged. So, um, so if you want to have a young, healthy heart, then give someone a hug today. So that's, that's a big piece of it. And that's, you know, that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about this, this uh, epic process um, that we have when every patient, whenever a patient comes into the clinic, we look at the causative factors. So I've got a little graph I'm going to share with you guys today. And then, and then we're also going to be talking on the emotional side about how you can refill your neurotransmitters and just get your brain back online. So, so just, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, from, uh, 
perspective from each one of you, how many of you have ever looked at, you know, your brain as a pharmacy or your brain as having this capability of producing and manufacturing all the, all the great chemicals you need? How many of you ever looked at your brain that way? I think that's a really cool concept. Never, never looked at it from that angle though. That's cool. Yeah. Cause, cause you can feed your brain with, you know, if, if you want to pull out of your brain. So if you just say, okay, look at, let's look at our brain as a generator and it's like, all right, well, we have this generator and literally it can, you can generate whatever emotion you're looking for and experience, but you got to be in the right state of mind, you know? So just by shifting your state of mind, you can go from having this generation of, of, you know, kind of stress response, cortisol, uh, having your amygdala on fire and your limbic system freaking out. And, and you can be thinking those thoughts that trigger this reaction and uh, manufacturing that, or you can be manufacturing like oxytocin, like we talked about before, or uh, GABA. And those are the calm and relaxation neurotransmitters. Or you, you manufacture dopamine. You say, man, I have really accomplished a lot of great things in life. And I, I think every single one of you, if you look back and you say, okay, what are some of those great things I've accomplished throughout the course of my life? I guarantee you can just go through and you'll check the box, you know, say, wow, well, yeah, I've, I've, I made it through this. I had this child. I did this you know, I accomplished that. I never thought I'd make it through school, but I did, or I, I never thought I'd make it through that. You know, I was talking to one of my patients who runs hundred mile races and, and, you know, she's like, I never thought I'd make it through a hundred miler. And I did. And, you know, so it's just like, wow, there's just some very cool things that we've all accomplished. And that triggers dopamine. You don't have to be in that, you know, crossing the finish line and spiking the football to get dopamine. You can do it just literally right now. And then when you have serotonin, you know, you say, well, when is the time that you like really stood up for what you believed in? And when was the time you were a leader? When was the time that you actually took uh, the time to, to share some insights and wisdom with other people? You know, that's going to give you more serotonin. So maybe today there's someone you can talk to about that. So, so all these things, if we look at our brain as a generator of energy and a generator of experiences, um, and then the more you can, you can learn to, to work with these neurotransmitters, I believe the, the more enjoyable life becomes. So, so we're going to talk about that today, but first we're going to talk about, uh, you know, kind of some of the stressors that get in the way of these neurotransmitter productions and uh, how it relates to your physical health. And, uh, and then I'm going to share with you just some, some basic, uh, labs that I, I believe every single one of us uh, need to be running on a regular basis so that we know where we stand because you know you can do all the work you want from a mindset stage and a psychological psychological stage but until you address that physiology and if you don't have the right raw materials to make these neurotransmitters it's going to be hard it's hard for a lab or it's hard for a manufacturing plant to generate a new car if it doesn't have the, the parts right i mean this is what tesla they ran into they just Oh no, we don't have enough batteries. And so then they had to create a huge battery operation plant, you know, outside of Fallon, Nevada in a place called Fernley. And so they got a massive yeah. plant out there. So, so, uh, so what do you think about that, Cade? We'll figure out how to create our, our batteries and then we'll show the raw material. I'll do a little functional medicine uh, today. And then we'll go through kind of the epic process and things, the mistakes people make when they're looking to get their, their brain healthy. I think that sounds amazing. I think everyone's uh, jazzed about that. Awesome. And, and as always, as you guys have questions, let's, let's go through these. But, but so let's, let's jump into the EPIC process. So, Kay, do you remember what the EPIC acronym stands for? I've kind of got it back here. So Yeah. Yeah. So, so EPIC, this stands for all the four major inflammatory causes or stressors on the body. So you have environmental you have, um, let's see. So E mm -hmm. P is physical traumas. Yeah. I is going to be infections from this could be like uh, bacterial, viral, or uh, fungal. And then you have C is chemical. That's it. Yeah. Yep. And so, uh, so that's what we're going to look at today. Cause these stressors, if you look at the three phases of care, you know, we always have to look at life and we say, well, what's the roadmap? Where are we going? And, and by looking at the stressors, 
in this context will help you understand, you know, maybe if you're feeling frustrated because you're stuck and you're like, man, I really want to manufacture these, these uh, feelings of happiness and contentment and satisfaction and peace and all these things. But, but I just can't, I can't sleep at night. I'm so anxious or I just feel like my body's stuck. I'm in pain all the time. And so what I'm going to do is share with you why sometimes the body doesn't have spontaneous healing and why you can't just generate and manufacture these neurotransmitters just by blink, uh, the blink of an eye. Cause you know, it sounds pretty magical. And, but, you know, unfortunately we have to go back downstream and say, well, why is it that you can't manufacture those in the first place? So, so in this epic process, let's first of all, talk about function of the body. So, so if I, if I asked you, Cade, um, what is the definition of health? Like, how would you define someone who's hundred percent healthy? How would you define that? Um, that would be through their, their body systems are um, functioning optimally. Um, so they have optimal function in all their, in all their um, bodily systems. So you can, you can move, you can, your, uh, your organs, glands, hormones, they're all working at, a, at an optimal level. There you go. So, and, and if we just defined optimal, we say, well, Optimal would be 100% function. And if we looked at the word function, well, what is function? Well, all function is, is the ability to perform an action, right? Yeah. And, and so in your body, you have, it's like you have a brake and a gas pedal. So the brake pad and the gas pedal are really important because if you just are constantly functioning on dopamine all the time, and you're just constantly flooded with serotonin, you need a break eventually. You need to break from those like really kind of euphoric experiences, the rewarding experiences. And that's where our body starts producing GABA and, and oxytocin. And that's when things start to calm down a little bit. So that's like the break. And then we go to sleep and our brain waves change. And so, so if you start looking at functionality, you say, well, our bodies have to have 100% ability to perform an action at the appropriate time. So, so, I mean, I think there's a, there's a circadian rhythm when it comes to health. So, you know, health by the, the, uh, you know, national standards, you know, the national institutes of health is defined it and the AMA ha have defined health as the absence of disease. Um, health is the absence of disease. That's a pretty, that's a pretty wimpy definition of health, if you ask me. So, so what we're going to be talking about today is this health that is long lasting and it actually gives you the resiliency so that you can withstand those stressors in life. And so you can actually start manufacturing some of these beautiful neurotransmitters um, that we're all looking for. And, uh, and we're, we'll share with you some peptides. We'll share with you some, some ways that you can uh, help fuel that manufacturing plant uh, in between your ears uh, today. But the first thing that happens is, is your body, if you look at a graph, and at the top of the graph, you have 100% function. The bottom of the graph is 0%. 0% function, what would you say if someone was functioning at 0%, they'd have to be what, kid? They'd probably be dead. Yeah, <laughs> dead. Yeah, no, no ability to perform any actions. Like, you know, so that- Or I guess it could be like vegetable state. Yeah, but they're still performing actions. I mean, just to just for the human body to be alive is, I mean, the, the trillions of interactions is crazy. So, so yeah, that's death essentially, but, or, you know, pretty darn close, but our bodies are so resilient that even if we're functioning at like 10% in certain capacities, like you think of cirrhosis of the liver and our liver can literally be 80 to 90% non-functional but our bodies can still handle it. Our bodies still circumvene and we have the ability to live. So uh, it's pretty wild, right? That's why someone who's on a, they're waiting for that liver transplant. They're like, man, I've scarred up the majority of my liver. I'm just waiting to get that new liver in, but they're, you know, we can still live. It's not health though, is it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah and so that's see a lot of people. Um, we don't even know there's, there's a problem because you know, there's, there's a problem before symptoms show up. That liver was problematic well before liver enzymes started elevating and, and well before someone started noticing some of the symptoms of liver failure. That's right. 
So if we look at this functionality and you guys are all like, well, how does this relate to my brain? Well, I can tell you your brain does not manufacture um, the neurotransmitters that you want until you have the raw material. So remember, we're going back to the batteries that Tesla, they had a challenge. They had a lot of cars they had to produce, but then they ran out of batteries. And so they said, oh, shoot, this is a problem because if there's no batteries, we can have the coolest car in the world, but it's not going to drive anywhere. No energy. So, so if we look at symptoms, you know, throughout life, what happens is we have stressors that build up and we have, we have things that cause malfunctions in the body. Now, malfunctions are imperceivable. You know, think about some emotional stressors you've had. You know, how many of you have gone through divorces, uh, maybe bankruptcy? You've had stressful jobs. You've put undue stress on yourself about, you know, you look back and you say, that was ridiculous. I was even stressing about that. You know, there's stress in school. There's stress uh, in society to behave a certain way and be a certain way. And, and all those things, you know, eventually, if we don't have the ability to resolve those stressors, that starts to cause uh, a, a degradation in our body's overall function. So let's just assume at birth, we're all born with 100% function and we're 100% healthy. And we have all this growth hormone and we have all this oxytocin, we're connected with our mom and now we're starting to see the world through different eyes. But as we do that, our, our, you know, our, our, we have great function, but then as we start entering into life, life starts beating us down. So we have emotional stressors, that's the E in the epic. And the emotional stressors can start getting us closer to symptoms. Now symptoms, if you define symptoms, you've got to have a loss of about 60 to 70% of function before symptoms show up. So Cade, when is it that people usually focus on their health? Before <laughs> symptoms or after? After. Way after, right? The it's usually, and even then you get a little minor symptom and it's usually like guys are the worst at it. It's, it's like, oh, I broke, I think I broke my hip, but I'm, uh, I'm going to walk it off. Like, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> right. uh, but no, you start noticing symptoms and it's like, oh, it like comes and goes. It's not a big deal. Um, it's really only a big deal if it's there all the time. Right. And, and that's near enough to like raise an alarm. Yeah. And, and the, the irony of it is, is when people wait to do something about their health until they have symptoms, it's like, it's already too far gone. Like you're, you've already missed the opportunity to do some real healing. And so now you've got a lot of work to do, a lot of catch up work. So, so you know, it's, it's the difference between letting your car run all the way out of gas before you hit the gas station, right? You're out on the freeway and you're like, I think I can go to the next exit. And I think all of us have done that, or maybe it's just me, but you know, you push it too far and then your car runs out of gas and you can literally see the gas station two miles ahead. And you're like, why did I do this? You know, what was the point? And, and so, you know, I remember being stranded in Nephi and I have, it's the middle of winter and I got my two young kids with me and I'm just like, we ran out of gas and I could literally see the exit ahead. And so, so, uh, you know, luckily I was able to get some, some, uh, you know, uh, I, I can't remember. I called the auto, the, my insurance company and they sent someone with a gas can and, and so it was pretty awesome, but, but we literally, if we would have been out there another hour, we would have been really cold. And then there could have been chances of, you know, like real danger and real threat. So, so don't let your car run out of gas before you stop at the gas station. Or if you're a battery operating car, like Kate's got a nice Tesla, I've got a nice Tesla too, but you know, maybe you stop and get it charged up before it gets super low. And that's, that's the analogy that we're going for, because if you wait until symptoms show up, you're ultimately waiting too long because, you know, you have emotional symptoms. Now, just go through in your head, everybody, real quick and categorize. Say, what are the emotional stressors that you've had in your life from the past? And uh, if you took a minute and just kind of wrote those down, you probably realize that, wow, there's been some big events. I mean, how about puberty? <laughs> That's an emotional stress, right? <laughs> What's going yeah. on? Like, my kids are all like, you know, teenagers or my boys, like I swear, uh, Dom now is growing like an inch every month. Um, and Jonah is like a man child. And either, you know, my boys are 15, my daughter's 17. She's, you know, there's a lot of complexity that's going on. So, 
So even that, but just think about it. Then you enter into adulthood. You have your first job. Maybe you're married and now all of a sudden you have to learn how to share a space or you're living with somebody. You've got that serious relationship. Um, so many emotional challenges. The next thing that shows up that starts to minimize our functionality, because remember, we're talking about how can you create the best manufacturing plant so that your brain can be optimized and you can you can produce oxytocin at will. You can go give someone a hug and boom, you've got it right there. But uh, some of you, you hug people and, and there's no oxytocin to be made because you don't have the right manufacturing facilities. Your battery plant's not in operation. So we're going to get that in operation today, but physical. So think about the physical traumas you've had. All those small accidents build up. It's like death by thousand cuts. You know, yesterday I saw a patient and her shoulders totally locked up. And you can see where a clavicle had been displaced because she was in the military and had to carry, I think it was a 40 pound pack for 70 miles over the course of like three days or something. And it, it ended up separating her shoulder. And, you know, she's looking at it and she doesn't have full range of motion. And she really wants to do all these things from a physical fitness perspective. But unfortunately, she had damaged her whole anatomy and had let that go for far too long. And so now it's like, well, let's see what we can do with regenerative medicine. Fortunately, there's some amazing treatments that we have available with peptide therapy, with some of the tissue allografts that cause stem cells to proliferate. That's been incredible. And so we can help her, but those physical traumas over time, if you think about headaches, if any of you get headaches, once again, oxytocin is a really good treatment strategy for headaches. But headaches can show up because you start getting a little bit of tension in your neck, a little bit more, a little bit more. Now you got tech neck because your head's always down looking at your phone or you're driving your heads forward because the traffic's freaking you out and you have a long commute or whatever it might be. But the symptoms will show up once those traumas drop below, remember, about 60%, 60 to 70% loss of function. And remember, function is the ability to perform an action. So once you lose 60 to 70% of function, then your body starts to show up with symptoms like pain. And that's pretty dangerous because pain, if, we, if you look at it, one of our big purposes and our mission, one of the reasons we exist as an, as an organization is we want to end pain and chronic disease. And that's, you know, it's a, it's a bold statement because we have an opiate crisis in our country right now. And one of the reasons we're in an opiate crisis is because people don't know where to find solutions for pain. And so um, how many of you, we've been able to help you in a substantial way, get rid of, you know, some of these pain conditions you've got, you know, and, and, and so hopefully if we've been able to do that, now you're starting to see that, you know, once, just because your symptoms are gone and you're like, oh, I no longer have pain, I'm, I'm pain free, but but remember, we've got a lot of work to do to get you back to optimal function. So if your goal is to be functioning at 100%, just because your symptoms are being resolved, it doesn't mean you're out of the, out of the woods. And so Cade, like in your back, for example, Cade broke his, his thoracic spine. Um, man, that was, uh, let's see, uh, that's been 2004. Is that when you broke it or 2005? Yeah, I think it was 2006, actually. Yeah. 2006. So still that's, you know, that's uh, 15 years right there since you, you broke it. So, so if you look at that, like, yeah, you finally did some regenerative medicine when you got the, you got the stem cells activated and you just got your body to heal. Um, but you know, it's still something, could you damage it again? I mean, would you say it's at a hundred percent? Yeah. I'd probably say maybe it's like uh 80%. Right. I, I don't, I never noticed it, but I've, uh, I've like snowboarding, I've done a few things and landed the wrong way. And it's, uh, it causes some, I notice the pain coming back every once in a while. If, yeah, if I don't take care of it. Yeah. If you don't take care of it. And that's the thing is our, everybody has a weak link. And so, you know, we've all been injured. Some of you maybe more than others. And I know, uh, Kate, you've got your fair share of injuries, um, I've had my fair share, which is why I've had stem cell therapy 21 times for various reasons. 
And, um, but it's been an amazing thing because it's gotten my pain levels where, like Kate said, I would agree. It's, you know, I'm, you know, my shoulders, for example, can function around 80%. 100% based on the damage I've done, probably not, but, but man, 80%, you have full range of motion, your body's super healthy. You can do your pull-ups, your push-ups, you can do whatever you need, but, uh, and that's beautiful. But what most people do is they mistakenly think, okay, now I don't have to do anything about it because I've crossed the finish line. I don't have pain or I don't have the emotional stress. I was speaking with a, uh, a gentleman the other day and he's retired and I'm like, so what's, how's things emotionally for you? And he's like, well, I, I really don't have any stress because I've been retired for five years and I don't do anything. I said, well, doesn't that kind of stress you out that you don't do anything? And he's like, actually it's really boring and that's kind of stressful. So, so even the stress, if you remove all the emotional triggers, you know, we're still going to have that. So it's something we have to contend with on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, so, you know, we did the emotional scan. Let's do a quick physical scan and just take a minute and take a journey into your past and say, where have you suffered some injuries physically? You know, maybe that's like me. I was wrestling with Cade and he was 15 and I was 25 and 24 and Cade broke my ribs and I realized like he is a lot stronger than me, even though he's like just this kid, he's strong as hell. And so I learned after about the third time of Cade breaking my ribs, I said, you know, this is going to be something that's detrimental to my future health if I keep wrestling with him. <laughs> <laughs> and that was not Cade being mean. It was just Cade putting the hurt on, you know, squeezing me down a little bit. <laughs> I didn't get you back from earlier years. I did put some physical trauma on Kate, so he'll never be 100% based on the amount of times I hung him up on the doorknob by his underwear, right? So, <laughs> yeah, my, or, or threw him into the wall and played. My underwear have never been the same. <laughs> That's true. They stretched. It's pretty amazing what Fruit of the Looms can do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so those physical traumas, you know, wrestling with your brothers or sisters or playing volleyball, you know, diving for the ball or those automobile accidents, or even, you know, some, I know a lot of you are cowboys, you've fallen off your horses. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's those small things, the basketball injuries, bumping into people, those breaks we have as a kid, you know, those slowly start to whittle down our functions, just like the emotional stress. If you don't take some time to clear out the emotional energy, you start, you start carrying that baggage and then pretty soon your functionality drops and you become symptomatic, you end up with anxiety or insomnia or worse depression, um, or you end up with chronic pain, you know, chronic pain is when you've had something that's lingering for about 12 weeks and it's not going away on its own. And that's chronic pain is a very serious condition because it drains your energy. It's just like having, now you got the battery that's manufactured but it's being drained out because you have pain all the time. So you, you, you can't drive as far. So let's talk about the third one or, or anything else on physical pain. So, so if you look in your past, we'll just finish that exercise. If you look in your past and you think about all those physical traumas that have shown up, what OSHA shows is that by the age of 13, 13, Kate, we have over a thousand impacts on the physical body, a thousand, the average person by the age of 13. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? That's right. Just little micro accidents. It's wild to think about, but it, it makes sense. Like you, you especially if you're active. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think. Uh, and and one thing I I I worry about with um, with kind of the the current culture on this new tech world that we live in is. You know, I, I think that the physical little traumas are probably a lot less with some some kids and it's because they're they're like frying their dopamine um, by just focusing on screen time and and you know gaming whatever and not to say that that's uh, a horrible thing but I think everything is uh, good in moderation yeah it seem like that that that's the go-to for a lot of kids is instead of going outside riding a bike and like it, my my dream day um as a kid was like 
a shovel, some dirt, and my bike. And that was <laughs> I like I was set. I could make some, some yeah. dirt jumps and and a shovel. Yeah, I had a couple of GI Joe guys in my pocket so I could set them up and you know kind of play some strategy, but that was the only difference. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> Yeah, that's so it, it's pretty cool because if you think about that, the traumas that kids have, because video games, it's traumatic if you sit too long, right? Yeah. It's a different kind of trauma. My kids in school, I'm, I'm like, I want you guys in the back of the classroom so you can stand up and move your body as you're learning and just let your teacher know, say, hey, I get ants in my pants. Um, and, and, you know, especially for Dom, it's been really good because he can move around because once again, that starts to cause physical trauma. We know sitting is the new smoking. You know, we, we, if, if you sit straight for more than seven hours a day, it's as if you smoke two packs of cigarettes a day. So, so you know, once again, I'm standing right now. I try to stand as often as I can. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting that you bring that up. And then that also fries the emotional cap capabilities because a lot of kids you know, instead of looking out the window, and I tell my kids this all the time, turn off your phones. And then my daughter's like, I'm just listening to music. And I'll tell Zoe, I'm like, just turn off the music. Let's actually have a conversation or drive in silence for a minute and just appreciate nature because we need so much stimulation for our brain that we forget to look inside of ourselves. And then by looking inside of ourselves, we see the expression of nature and the expression of God and all the creation, which is so beautiful. So um, let's go to infections. So infections are a big thing because there's a big infection going around, COVID-19. And I get asked every single day, you know, about the vaccine and if that's causing, you know, triggering these spike proteins, are the spike proteins um, being triggered in, in an inflammatory perspective and in an inflammatory sense where it actually is causing more infectious trauma to our body because our, our immune systems are behaving as if we've been infected. And so uh, I don't have all the answers, but, but what I do see is that our immune systems, traumas to the immune system is, is really an, a thing in life that brings our functionality down where we become symptomatic. And a lot of people just ignore this piece of it because if you think about the immune traumas, traumas from infection, it's a variety of things. It's not just COVID. I mean, yeah, that's one thing we have to worry about. How about influenza? I haven't heard anyone talk about that in a long time. It didn't just disappear off the face of the earth. It's still a real thing. You know, the other thing you have to worry about is what about these long-term viral infections? For those of you that have had mono as a kid, um, that mono can turn into Epstein-Barr virus or cytomegaly virus. That's another uh, big issue that a lot of people have that just drives down your energy levels. We treat a phenomenal amount of people who have Lyme disease and that Lyme disease can just harbor in the fatty tissues. And the, the thing about these lingering infections and you might find this interesting, Cade, but in Chinese medicine, they call it the Xiaoyang level. So even in, in ancient Chinese culture, a thousand, actually 1600 years ago, um, they were looking at the body and they said, a certain amount of humans harbor infections that are not at the surface, but they're not deep enough to kill the body and cause it to be super sick. And they call it a Xiao Yang sickness. So you can feel it in the pulse. And so I've listened to people's pulses yesterday and I was able to detect there's two patients that I had that had the Xiao Yang depletion, the Xiao Yang deficiency. And it's really interesting because then they go back and that was without me knowing their history. I, I, uh, and they go back and they say, well, actually, yes, I, I had mono when I was a kid. And so that, that bacterial infection, that mononucleosis can convert into a viral infection. And then that virus, you know, a virus does not want to kill the host. And that's, that's the thing that we all have to remember about COVID is the virus doesn't want to kill the host. And so, but it looks for an opportunity when it can start to replicate itself. So just like any other pathogen, um, you know, it's opportunistic when it sees a chance to thrive, it will just, it will just jump up. So you got to keep yourself super balanced and, and really healthy. And that's, that's the key because we're picking up on, on, I've heard studies where at least a thousand new viral strains every year, influenza strains, you know, it's, it's a virus that's constantly mutating and having variants. 
And usually what you'll find is it's, it's actually, there's some genetic updating that these infections can do if our body's in the right place. Then our DNA gets stronger because 50% of our genome, our, our DNA was actually constructed by viruses, which is pretty cool, right? So they're not all enemies. Wow. A lot of these viruses are, are, you know, they're frenemies. So in the beginning, they're like, they're a little too overbearing like COVID is. But in the end, we'll see that we'll have an updated respiratory tract because of it. That's really fascinating to think about. Yeah. So, but in the meantime, how do you keep your immune system strong? And this is where it goes down to the gut. And so, Cade, we'd like to get the scoop on people's poop. And why is that? Why is the poop so important when it comes to the immune stressors? I, I was going to think of some snarky remark there, but I'll hold it in. <laughs> um, so um, our, our digestive tract carries, that's where the majority of our bacteria, like you, you have a lot of good bacteria as well as some, there's opportunistic um, bacterias and, and, uh, and parasites, different things like that, that, that dwell in our digestive system. And so if we can figure out you know, what, what that balance looks like and really understand what's going on in your digestive tract, the best way to do that is, is through poop. So that's why we get the scoop on the poop. Yep. Um, it's a great test that gives some insights into what's happening. Really, like that's the true internal test, I would say. It's like, there's a lot of insights on what's going on right in the gut. Yeah, and it's so critical because your gut is where your immune system is getting the notifications from. You know, because think about your digestive system, you're taking the outside world in to your body when you eat food. Um, and so, uh, so, you know, you have your mouth and then it goes all the way through. And, and so the interesting thing about that is if you can keep your gut really healthy, you'll have a super healthy immune system because 70% of your immune system is manufactured right there in your gut. And then if you want to produce these powerful neurotransmitters that are going to light up your brain. Well, these neurotransmitters, a lot of the, the byproducts and a lot of the, the precursors, you know, or we'll call it the raw material is made by the bacteria in your gut. So really critical. So these immune traumas. So if you just think about, well, well, what creates symptoms? So fatigue is a big symptom if you have immune trauma. And so how many of you have fatigue? How many of you have just a slight sore throat all the time and you just notice your tonsils are a little swollen or maybe you've had your tonsils removed, which is, which brings your functionality down. If you've had your tonsils removed, that's a big assault on the immune system. The other assaults, they can be sometimes being over vaccinated. Um, you know, as kids right now, I think there's 72 vaccines that are scheduled between zero and 18, or maybe it's even zero and 13. I can't remember that cutoff date. Um, but, but these, this vaccine schedule can put undue amounts of stress on the immune system because now the immune system is being introduced to all these pathogens and that can create some autoimmune reactions where then if you go eat gluten or eat too much sugar or you, you eat dairy, then your body thinks it's a threat. And then you're like, why am I tired all the time? And why do I have bloating and digestive issues? And some of that can be from the vaccines we got as kids. And I know the vaccine schedule when I was a kid um, was about a third of what it is today. And then this is just the beginning of, you know, now we're going to have even more campaigns for more vaccines. And, and, uh, and that, once again, that can be an immune assault. So we just have to start looking at, you know, some gentle ways of introducing these things in the, into the immune system maybe one vaccine every couple of years um, might be a more appropriate way to do it, but at least we need to start being open to some, some change in that strategy. Um, I don't think we'd be nearly as susceptible to these new viral strains that are coming in. You know, we wouldn't be in the middle of a pandemic if, if that was the case. The other thing that you wanna do on your immune is say, have you had any history of antibiotics? Antibiotics, you know, they go in there and yes, you do not want an infection and antibiotics literally saved us in World War II. It's not the, you know, it, it's not the bullets and the arrows and the swords that killed the soldiers. It was the infections afterwards that, that knocked them out. And so, uh, you know, the invention of uh, penicillin, amoxicillin, 
just miracle drugs. And we thought we could conquer the world when we had steroids and antibiotics. But now we've learned that those things, steroids especially, are very hard on the immune system. And they lead to downstream symptoms. So yes, you're taking care of the initial symptom up front. All right, we got rid of your sore throat, but we didn't go to the cause of why. And we never rebuilt the gut after we destroyed everything. So we drop nuclear bombs on people and then we expect them to be able to bounce back. So that's one of the reasons that we're here talking about functional medicine is because your symptoms are just a manifestation of an underlying cause and an underlying disease process. So what is that from? Well, is it from emotions, physical traumas, immune traumas? You know, all these things can show up. How about parasites, Cade? We didn't talk about parasites, but. Yeah, you, you can get, um, well, that's, that's something that will typically just hang out in the digestive tract. And so we'll, we'll see that in stool tests sometimes is someone's got uh, um, some elevated parasites. Um, yeah, we see a lot of blastocystis hominis. We see, uh, we have, we've seen a few cases of tapeworm, which is kind of interesting. I don't think I've heard of that in St. George. Um, yeah, we've, we've seen it. I, you know, there's varying, varying reasons, but uh, blastocystis hominis is probably the most frequent parasite that we see. And then what we're seeing now is uh, a lot of SIBO, that small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Yeah. Now we're seeing just uh, that is um, exploding right now. So, so if you have uh, any bloating and if you notice that, you know, even if you're eating like pretty benign foods, like certain vegetables and you get kind of bloating and gassy from it, um, there's a good chance you might have SIBO. It causes, it can cause really foul breath. So if you're like, why do I always have bad breath? That could be one of the causes, but, but yeah, so all these things, you know, cause a degradation of the immune system. And then once again, once your immune system drops in its function, that's when symptoms show up and that's when we get really sick. You know, if we, it's okay to get sick. We, we actually want you to have symptoms where you get, you know, runny nose and you, you have a couple of days where you've got the sniffles and maybe you've got some body aches. That's how your body actually develops this Im immune intelligence. We're so scared of getting any sickness these days that we're not fully recalibrating our immune system. So, you know, take an Epsom salt bath, get some herbs, you know, but but sometimes your body just going through that, that the phases of detox um, is actually really good for your, your immune response. So, so those are some things to look at. The, and immune is what's leading to a lot of chronic disease and all these plans. So the final one in this epic process are chemicals. Now, this is interesting because if you think about chemicals, we're, we're trying to manufacture some pretty amazing neurotransmitters in our brain. And that's that's the purpose of this conversation is saying, well, what is getting in the way of you manufacturing oxytocin at will or GABA at will or anandamide or dopamine or serotonin, you know, all these really amazing neurotransmitters. Well, one of the biggest things that gets in the way are chemicals. And so, Cade, where would you say the, the majority of the chemicals come from that get in the way of people's ability to manufacture these beautiful neurotransmitters? The biggest ones are in our food. Food's a huge source, right? Yeah. I, I think food, obviously you have air. Sometimes we can't control the air that we breathe. Um, it's, <laughs> <laughs> right. You can only carry around your, your Dyson <laughs> air cleaner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's not a lot we can do there, but yeah. And like uh, medications and food, those are probably the number one things that I can think of, of off the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the uh, EPA estimates that the average American is exposed to about 180,000 chemicals every single week. And maybe a third of those have been tested for safety. So there's, there's chemicals everywhere. I mean, even your tap water, you know, in our hacks, we shared the study that just by drinking tap water for a week, fluorinated tap water, uh, patients showed symptoms of hypothyroidism and their TSH, which is the main marker for hypothyroidism actually started to increase, which shows that their thyroid was malfunctional just by drinking tap water for a week. I mean, that's crazy. Um, I've had people tell me, why are you so worried about water? Because at least you got clean water. You know how many places you can't get clean water. And so I'm like, 
hey, I, I get that. I'm not, I'm, I'm really grateful that I have water and, and it's clean water, but the chemicals that we're using to clean it is, you know, can be very detrimental. And, and trust me, I know that, that you know, using uh, decontaminants is, is actually really critical if we're going to live in a society. But um, when you're drinking the water and putting it into your body, that can be some of the chemicals that start to drive down your function. You know, so we already talked about thyroid function. The other function is your liver. Your liver has got to process these chemicals. And one of the reasons why we see such a, a prevalence of obesity and diabetes or diabetes is these chemicals start bogging down your liver and then your liver cannot produce the sugars properly. Your liver also, if the detoxification pathways get blocked up, uh, your body tends to harbor toxins in fat tissue. So all the sugars that you're eating, all the, all the, the great fats and proteins, your liver can't metabolize those and break down those nutrients. So then it just goes into a fat cell and that's where our waistline starts expanding. So, um, so chemicals are a big deal. So if we look at all these, just to kind of summarize and, and put this together, because it's super interesting if you look at this, our body loses health every time we have small little traumas that go unresolved. And these are called malfunctions. Once your body has uh, about a 60 to 70% loss of function from these malfunctions, that's when symptoms show up. Just a clear definition of a symptom. A symptom is a departure from normal function and a manifestation of an underlying disease. So what's below the symptom line is called disease. And so what happens in most of our lives is we say, well, we want to live this abundant, healthy life. We want to be able to make the neurotransmitters. We want to have a super healthy brain and be vibrant, but we have these disease patterns that are showing up. And so one of the things I promised today is I talked to you about functional blood chemistry. So what you can all do is, it, on a regular basis, I think at least every six months. And if you're doing peptide therapy with us or any hormone replacement therapy, um, or any regenerative medicine, if you've had knees injected, your back injected um, recently, you want to get your blood work ran and do this because it can show you how low the tank is. Because once that gas light goes on, it's too late, right? You're like, oh man, I got 60 miles before the next exit and I only have 30 miles of gas. And so by looking at your functional blood chemistry, we can start to analyze where the drop in function is showing up from all four categories. And then we focus on the five core pillars of health. So we focus on getting your gut health results. So that takes care of that immune side of things. We focus on getting your nutrition corrected, which helps with the chemicals. And by getting better nutrition in, you'll start to notice emotionally you feel better. Physically, your body will move better because your tendons and ligaments, they all need hydration. They all need good food, nourishment. And by the way, whenever you're going for a nutritional pr protocol, start with hydration first. It's the easiest thing to knock out. If you're getting hydrated, you're 50% of the way there. Um, then the, the third pillar of health is where you focus on hormones. So we're actually using peptides like uh, IGF-1, CJC-1295, epimorelin, uh, other peptides like epitalin, um, you know, a variety of PT-141. These things all activate certain hormonal pathways in the body. One of the beautiful peptides that we talked about last night was Selenc, which Selenc has antiviral properties. So especially for people who have lost their sense of smell or taste, we found this to be a, an effective peptide for that. Um, but the, the other thing that you'll see is that Selenc is actually really good for GABA and good for oxytocin. So it helps you feel connected. It's, it's an anxiolytic, which means it helps remove anxiety. So you can use those things to help improve your body's overall functionality. And then the fourth pillar of health is movement. And so once again, when you go look at physical traumas, how many of you have areas of your body that are stuck, that aren't moving? So one of the ways that you can increase the healthy brain chemicals and neurotransmitters is moving your body more frequently. I can guarantee you if you feel stuck, if you feel like you, you're, you're emotionally just in kind of a stagnant pattern, just by moving your body, uh, put on some good music and dance. I mean, uh, if, if I'm dancing, it's hopefully no one's watching because uh, I don't have the grooves, 
but um, but if you dance, it's so good for your body. I went for a run this morning and felt 10 times better. You know, I woke up kind of stiff and sore from my workout yesterday, went for a run, and it's just amazing what movement will do. And then the fifth pillar of health is the brain health. And so the brain is the big thing is if we're looking to manufacture these neurotransmitters um, from our brain, you know, if you, if you want to really foster that creation of powerful, powerful substances that can change your life and change your outlook on everything, help you continually heal and help you connect with other humans, your brain is that ultimate reservoir of, of these neurotransmitters. So, so, but, but in order to get access to those, once again, this is our battery making plan. So Cade, we got to remove a bunch of these things in that phase one of care. And once we've removed the emotional stressors, the physical stressors, the stressors from immune assaults, and then these chemical stressors, that's when the body can, the brain can actually start producing these neurotransmitters. So, so what'd you get out of that? Um, our body, whether it's our brain or any other system, they, it all, all comes down to those four key pieces with emotional stress, physical, um, immune and chemical. And so if we can figure out a way to optimize and reduce, you know, you're never going to have a, a perfect, uh, stress-free life. I think that'd, that'd be boring and not, not very exciting. But if you can reduce the impacts of those stressors, know what caused them, and then have ways of uh, kind of combating them or, or you know, how to reduce the impacts of those stressors, um, you can have a lot better brain function, a lot better bodily function overall. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's pretty amazing. So, so just remember to, in summary, if you look at how the body functions, symptoms are the very last thing to show up that shows you've got a disease pattern already built you can detect this easier by doing a blood lab a functional blood chemistry profile will show you everything that's going on from a uh, lack of balance perspective and then just because symptoms are gone that doesn't mean you're clear you know just because you have a lot loss lack of any symptoms um, and you feel great, it doesn't mean that you haven't had traumas throughout life that build on. And by the way, the older we get, the more these traumas start showing up our bodies, you know, we lose growth hormone by, you know, at least by the age of 40, we've lost about 50% of growth hormone, which helps us, you know, our body continually heal. So you've got to replenish some of these reserves. And the way we do that, focusing on the five core pillars of health, you've got to get the right testing, the right treatments, the right teaching curriculum. And then looking at all these things from a holistic perspective, you can start changing your lifestyle and literally start changing the way that you feel, the way that you look, and you, you actually start regenerating a brand new version of yourself. And so I believe that your health is just a simple expression of your life. It's not meant to be something that's as complicated as a lack of disease or symptoms. Your health is is simply how much life do you have in your body? So, so our goal, hopefully today by this conversation, you realize that there are some ways that you can add some years to your life, but also add some life to your years. And that's the whole goal of ours here at, at Your Healthy Self. So hopefully this was interesting. If you guys like this, don't forget to share it with someone. Go to iTunes. We're looking for some good, uh, some five-star reviews. So for those of you who love the show, go give us a five-star review. Tell us what you think. Just go to uh, iTunes right now. Get our, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just leave some comments below. We'd love to see that. Thank you guys so much. Amazing content as usual, Reagan. Thank you. And uh, we'll be back same time, same place next week. Don't forget to check out thesmartmedicine.com. Um, that's uh, the show today is brought to you by thesmartmedicine.com. For brain enhancement, look up uh, Inner Genius. It's an awesome, awesome supplement and product you can uh, get a hold of. So appreciate you guys. Love you. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.